Welcome all. Uh, it's lovely to be here. I'm quite excited for today. Um, and uh, Tara and I were just chatting ahead of, ahead of today and noting that this is an experiment. This is the first time that I've done a session like this. Uh, in the past, we did a um, how to facilitate online with uh, Peggy Sue, somebody else that's on our team. I learned a bit from that and I'll be resharing some of that, but uh, definitely a test. And so I'm, I'm seeking to kind of learn from you and see how today's go, today goes. So uh, thanks for being here. Uh, if you haven't already, take a second to say hi in the chat. It would be lovely to hear from you. You can share where you are. Um, and we started off with a poll. Uh, one of the key kind of little tips and tricks that I use, uh, especially to get a sense of who's in the room um, and as well in the room and who as well, um, uh, the kind of level of comfort or knowledge with the, the task or the topic at hand. So you can see that we've got a bit of a spread. That's kind of what I expected when it comes to facilitation overall. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing this. Tara, if you don't mind, can we share the next poll too for online facilitation? So this is kind of how experienced are you with facilitation overall? The next is um, how experienced are you with uh, online facilitation? Cause I wanna get a kind of a pulse check on that. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now and share the results. Okay, so we've got, you know, a third-ish beginners a third kind of starting out, some people that are more experienced. I'm gonna stop sharing. Let's keep that kind of spread in mind when I talk about our pop for today. And I'll, I'll say what that means. Get this off my screen, checking out my monitor. Tara, you'll jump in if you can't um, see anything or if it's not clear. Um, okay, so thanks for the lovely introduction. As Tara said, so my name's Jay Sinnott. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, and I am a senior programs manager with the Center for Social Innovation. I focus on our climate program. So I run what we call Climate Ventures. If you don't know about Climate Ventures, I'd love to tell you about it. So feel free to reach out. My contact info will be shared. Um, I have facilitated many things, <laughs> many meetings, many workshops. Um, what I'll say up top, two important things for me to share. Um, I've learned from others. That's usually how this goes with facilitation. Um, if nothing else, in terms of like, how do you learn more? Uh, show up to stuff, uh, register for stuff, pay attention to what other people are doing, how they're facilitating, observe, try your best to apply it and mirror it, and then practice, practice, practice. Um, what's cool and interesting about facilitation is that um, you pick up things as you go. Um, so give credit where credit is due, but then often you'll notice that there's some stuff that like, you know, for example, who knows where Rosebud Thorn came from? I've heard multiple uh, examples of where that as an activity has come from. Um, so uh, that said, I want to acknowledge my team. Um, some of the content, as I said, I'm borrowing from Peggy Sue Devon, um, a fellow person on our programs team, also Matali Makani. Um, and yeah, basically I'm nothing without my team. So there's my acknowledgement. Um, another acknowledgement. So land acknowledgements, uh, especially online, how might we make these more um, interesting, meaningful, deeper? Um, that's my first kind of prompt for today. Uh, we at CSI believe that it's very important to acknowledge the land and the people of the land that you're on. As I'm doing this, um, you can chime in on the chat with where you are. If you know the, uh, the Indigenous lands that you're on, awesome. Probably most of us are in Toronto or Toronto. So acknowledging the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Seneca, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Uh, stop reading stuff memorize the names, uh, practice how to pronounce them, ask if you don't know. That's kind of, those are kind of my first tips and this applies for in-person as well, of course. Um, but uh, I just wanna show a couple of examples and you're gonna notice that I'm kind of trying to show, not tell, um, and, uh, and show uh, ways that I do this, um, especially online. Um, so visual cues are great, um, photos are great. You see how I've bolded the names. Um, so this is kind of a standard one that I would use for more like a bigger kind of signature events for climate ventures. Um, this is also uh, a kind of template slide that I use. So this is a screenshot or that we use a screenshot of um, nativeland.ca is a really cool tool. If you don't know it, you've probably seen it at other CSI events. So I usually prompt people to, you know, if you don't know the lands that you're on, use this tool and find out. Um, and it's just like a great example of data visualization as well. Um, and so one, one way I do it is I um, just opening, this will be the slide up um, that you see, and I prompt people to share in the chat where they're joining from. And it's really cool too, when people are all across, uh, all across Canada. Um, and I say like, you know, don't, we're not gonna judge you for your spelling, don't worry. <laughs> um, and then another one, you know, like 
to make things meaningful, um, try your best to tie it into the content of the day. Um, and so this was something that I shared. I borrowed this from um, a programs team as well. Uh, Richard Ragami, he's an amazing or was an amazing writer um, and thinker and um, Ojibwe man. And um, I, I shared this uh, ahead of a networking and kind of social event. So you can see what I bolded there. What gives this life its resonance is when those trajectories cross and we become engaged with each other, kind of inviting people to, to lean into connecting with each other, for example. Okay, pop. Uh, give me a sign of life. Raise, uh, uh, give me a thumbs up if you have heard of pop before or if you've used it. Okay, I'm just trying to look here to see all my our, all our little screens. Keep keep your thumb up if you if you've used it before. No, okay, cool. So it's new for some people. Awesome. Um, my team is probably laughing at me right now. I'm obsessed with this acronym. <laughs> so uh, the idea is to stop and pop. Um, I think it comes originally from well. I'm gonna find out exactly, but I think it comes from Suzanne Hawkins is who I first heard of it. She's still here on the West Coast, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but POP stands for purpose, outcomes, process. Why are we meeting or gathering? What are we trying to achieve? How will we do it? This is a lifesaver for, uh, especially, well, online meetings for sure, but meetings generally. Uh, nothing worse when you show up to a meeting and you're like chit chatting 15 minutes in, wait, why are we meeting again? <laughs> um, so this is my tool for that. Uh, and I think it applies for uh, a lot of different environments, not just meetings. It can also be for workshops. It can also be for projects, um, but here we go. So purpose for today, introductory learning and connecting on online facilitation. Note some of those outcomes there. So I'd like to kind of start with why um, and start with some key practices that I'll talk about kind of like in-person to online. Uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of people have kind of let go of some practices that we know to be true um, and that still can work online. Um, so I wanna note some of that stuff and then uh, name some key tips, tools and activities. That's today. Uh, this is my plan, probably it won't go that way. Um, you know, first kind of key practice facilitator is uh, have a plan, be prepared to let it go. Um, so that's my, that's my plan for our kind of, our flow. Uh, we're already at 1242, I'm already behind. Another key thing that you'll learn as a facilitator. Um, time can be your friend, it can also be your, your enemy. Um, so that's today. Uh, Tara, let's say that um, we will make it to, we're gonna break out at one o'clock. If you can help me with that, maybe give me like a five minute warning before that, in case I Great. lose track. Okay. Cool, thank you. Um, she's the queen of pop. <laughs> I'm obsessed. People make fun of me. Okay. Um, so I've just shared what, what I'm, how I'm approaching today. Um, as we've seen, we've got a spread of, of experience. Um, so I want to hear from you. So this is what I call, and I think I, I can't remember, I think it's from Exchange Learning Lab. Um, they call it a chat storm. So I'm posing this question to you. You're going to write it in the chat, but don't press send. So, um, and this is if, if you want to share. Um, but I would love to see some responses from you. If nothing else, what's like one key takeaway that you're hoping to take from today? So type your response in the chat. Don't press send. We'll take a minute. Or maybe 30 seconds. I'm going to do it too. Okay, you ready? Press send. Ha ha. Okay, I would love to, I would love your help with this, Tara. Um, what are we seeing come, come up? How to facilitate. Good format or process, great practices for engaging people online. What facilitation really means, how to do it. Interesting, okay, we'll start with that, Sharon. A tip or a tool to use to make online meetings more lively. Yes, Kale, I'm with you. Brilliant ways to ensure we're all engaged and heard. Inspiration, new ideas, how to manage the flow of conversations we're on topic and on time. Nice. Reminder, you're a bit rusty. Fine-tuning fine, fine tips and tools, cool. 
Uh, I'll also note that um, I'm happy to stay on for another 10 minutes or whatever. Also, my contact info will be shared. So if there's if we if we feel rushed, as we often do, especially online, happy to stick around um, and answer any other questions. Uh, one more question for you. Uh, is there a, a, a kind of case study or something coming up that you're freaked out about maybe or that you're worried about or you're thinking about? For example, like an online workshop or a meeting you have to facilitate, something like that. Um, I'm going to move on, but if you have something in mind, feel free to share it in the chat, and then Tara, maybe we'll uh, come back to that. Okay, Great. I talk too much. That's how I that's how I roll. Um, okay, starting with why. I think somebody, I think Sharon asked about this. Why do we facilitate? What's the role of the facilitator? We're going to try what facilitators call a popcorn. Um, so these are my kind of two questions for you. If you don't feel comfortable unmuting and speaking up, that's okay. You can always enter things in the chat. But I would love to hear from a couple of people and I, and I will sit with the silence. Why do we facilitate? What's the role of the facilitator? To harness the energy in the room. Awesome, harness the energy in the room from Grant, thank you. To provide the structure for less structured conversation. Yeah, okay. So harnessing energy, providing structure. Thanks, Leanne. And I think Leanne, last bring thought? Out, bring out people's viewpoints, like bring out all the viewpoints into the room yeah. so they can be. Um, yeah, I like that. I would use the word like invite people in, like kind of support them and sharing, yeah. Um, kind of similar to what Grant said around like harnessing. Any last thoughts? Cool. Two things, um, putting a question to a group uh, online in person facilitation, you, you can usually count on like, I think it's like eight seconds, somebody will speak up. That's like the longest I find that, and that's actually rare. I find it's more like four to five seconds, unless you have a, you've posed a bad question. <laughs> um, online, I find it's a lot longer. <laughs> online facilitation can be lonely. Uh, it can be awkward, lean in. Um, I often don't do popcorn like I just did. Um, I will if I feel like, okay, I feel like the group's kind of engaged, the energy's there, or if I feel comfortable enough with the participants, if nobody speaks up, like with the, I didn't even talk about the program that I run called Earth Tech. I know people really well, so I'll be like, um, Tara, I wanna hear from you. Um, and I've started doing that more because I just, it feels so lonely to be, be on my own. Also uh, generate, as we kind of heard um, from, you know, harnessing the ideas in the room, um, I'm going to share my ideas about, you know, why I facilitate, what's the role of facilitator. Um, there's no one way to facilitate, and I don't have the definitive answer on this. Um, there's really something special in um, uh, generating ideas from the group, um, and that applies online as well. Okay, um, playing with my two monitors here, which we will talk about. Um, so moving on. I actually just read this recently from Adrienne Marie Brown, and I love it. Um, she describes facilitation as like making it easier for people to be with each other as one definition. Another is uh, listening, paying attention, finding the patterns. What I noticed amongst effective facilitators I've known is that we're kind of obsessed with synthesis. It's like we're, tra we're trying to find connections and notice patterns. So both in um, trying to make connections between what people are saying, but as well um, identify the gaps in order to solve problems. So that's another. And another, and I really heard this from you, like it's about enabling people to find the answers that I would argue they already know or they already have like a gut instinct for and supporting the group and achieving more together. I think Leanne kind of hinted at that in terms of like, um, well, again, like bringing that structure, but also like, where are we trying to get to? So that's from me. If you have questions, feel free to add in the chat and then I'll pause in a second to see as well. Core components, as I, as I hinted before, I really feel like, um, you know, it's been a weird year and uh, we all kind of got thrown online. And I think that we've forgotten some of what we know um, and let go of some of what we know. Um, and so uh, this is a, these are core components for uh, online or facilitation generally, but then I'll talk about um, how I think they shift online. Uh, this is from Peggy Sue, <laughs> said someone this year, you're not working from home, you're at your home in a crisis trying to work. Um, 
it's it's really you can really uh, well I, going back to that I think like um, keep the wider context in mind keep the fact that people are going a little bonkers and things are tough and their kids trying to come into the room and they've just been on seven hours of Zoom meetings, et cetera, et cetera. You really need to keep that in mind, I think, even more so. And then also like just the, the socio-political context that we're in, it's intense. Um, and there's really something about um, knowing your role in that in holding space. And I'll come back to that. This is a facilitator joke. <laughs> I'll share this because this, this Twitter account makes me, yes. So uh, I'll come back to this as well. But um, as I've said, it's kind of lonely. It's kind of awkward. Like I can see these little screens for you. I'm constantly trying to, I can see some of you. I can't see all of you. Um, in a room, you're able to pick up on subtle cues, body language, shifts in energy, people looking elsewhere, whatever. Um, I can't stress this enough relying only on video as your marker for engagement is off. And I've really learned that. I remember like a year ago, I was like, oh my gosh, people are staring off into the distance. A lot of people have their videos off. I don't know, they're not answering when I put questions to the group, like, what am I doing, you know? Um, and then I would get like super positive feedback on workshops that we were facilitating. So again, um, this is something that I've learned. Uh, don't rely too much on it. And then also, you know, your head nodders are your friends. <laughs> So that's one thing I do a lot is um, give me a sign of life. So I'll say, give me a sign of life. Give me a wave. Are you still with me? Um, and invite people to kind of just like give me a cue. Um, and then as you've noticed, kind of a weigh in on the chat as well as another tool that you can use. I'm flying through this. Um, jump in or Tara, jump in if I'm, if I'm moving too fast or questions are coming up. So yeah, three core components. I would say this is like, uh, in person for sure, uh, as well as online. This is how I approach most things. So plan and prepare, hold space, reflect and follow up. Um, hold space, bit of a woo-woo facilitator term, but I like it. Um, most people think that facilitating is the holding the space. Um, there's so much that goes into the planning and the preparing. And I would argue more should go into the reflection and the follow-up as well planning and preparing. So this is pop is your tool for sure. Why are we meeting? Where, where are we trying to get to? And how are we going to do it? Preparing, um, I would say that uh, for online, especially so right now I'm at, I'm at CSI Spadina. I've got um, use monitors if you're if you're facilitating. Um, so I've got two screens. Um, I joined I was a bit scattered today. I didn't join well enough ahead of time. Normally, I would sign into the zoom 15 minutes ahead of time and like breathe and make sure I'm really calm, go through my flow. I set everything up. So like, if you've ever experienced this on Zoom um, or other tools, which we can talk about, you share your screen, you go into present mode, everything disappears. So you'll hear speakers be like, oh, I can't see you now. Um, and they had a plan in order to be able to see visual cues. So uh, two monitors are totally your friend. So on my one screen, I've got, I can see the poll, I can see the chat, I can see the participants. On the other screen, I've got my full, um, I'm, I'm presenting my uh, slide deck. Um, so that's something really important. I know some facilitators that say, on the one hand, um, Itali that I work with, she has a three to one ratio. She prepares for three hours for every one hour of facilitating. Um, mine's about like two to one, depending on how comfortable I am with the content. Um, and then as well, preparing, Itali blocks off the entire like morning or day before she's facilitating content. I try to block off like at least a couple hours before. That's plan and prepare. Holding space, there's so much to say here, but I think what I would wanna note, um, just to un like triple underline that is um, both it's difficult to read the room and read the energy and pay attention online. Um, typically in person, it's like, okay, how do we listen? But you know, we have to pay attention to what's unspoken. And so building in as many ways that you can get people to like voice their input or their feedback or try to like bring them out in this digital world, the better. Um, and then as well, just like context is key. Like we're still in a pandemic. Um, all of the other socio-cultural challenges that we experience are still here. And people have full lives and pressures that are exerted on them. And so keeping that in mind, I think is really important. Um, you know, I care so much about my, you know, my work and my content and people do care, but you need to, to know that people are humans as well. 
reflect and follow up. Um, we'll come back to this, but like never, never just end. <laughs> that happens a lot, right? When it's like timing is tight. Um, I would say online, um, we'll come back to this, but there's like really little things that you can do. Basically, it's like try to just like close the door, try to make sure that people aren't just like drifting off into the next thing. Cause guess what? They probably have a Zoom meeting they're just about to join. Um, so I think that that's really key. And then as well, um, following up with people and sharing. I mean, this is in person too, of course, but making sure people that know that they'll get the slide deck. Yes, they'll get the slide deck. You know, that's how I put that on the first slide. Um, and following up with any resources. And then also being attentive to like, was that a lot? Like, this is probably too much for today. I'm already way behind. Um, can you stay on and support them? Can you offer your time in a further way? Or like with the program that I run often, I'll be like, hey, can you come facilitate this thing for 90 minutes? And then also let's build this into our work together that you also coach people as a follow-up from that. Um, and I would say with online, it's just like um, the idea of asynchronous versus synchronous time. Let's put a pin in that, but I'll come back to it. Um, you know, the precious time of meeting in person or in person, the precious time of coming together. Um, how do you use that effectively and what's that for? And then what's the time outside that's asynchronous where it's not all together and how do you use that effectively as well? Hey, sorry, can you just go back to the, that first point of those three points? You said something about don't close the door. I didn't understand that. Close yeah, so door. what I... Yeah, yeah. What I what I notice is that, um, and this is happening a lot online. I'm seeing um, time is tight, even tighter. Like cut your content down even more than you would in person. Um, and that uh, at the end of today, we're gonna do like a one word checkout, for example, like something uh, that asks people to reflect on, or um, yeah, just basically reflect on what just happened. Thank you. Sometimes I'll do something deeper. Um, and again, I'll show you some different ideas for that. Um, but don't just let people drift off. Shay, so you asked call for it like a, a ragged minute. ending. Sorry, you asked for a five minute call. So just wanted to make sure you saw it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Let me know if I did not answer your question. Uh, we're going to share this afterwards, but these are some questions to ask yourself in advance of, of any meeting, but I would say especially online. Uh, I'd highlight um, how well do people know each other? Also, like how comfortable are they with the tools at their disposal? Um, and yeah, just how much time you have. I mean, that's in person as well, but I would say again for online, cut down your content even more. I love how people are adding stuff in the chat. Um, I'm not paying as close attention to her as I normally would, so please let me know. Um, any questions or any reflections so far? Feel free to uh, unmute yourself if you want to chime in. Um, if I can add a question, I think a lot of what you're speaking sure. to is um, kind of like larger facilitations or maybe larger groups or kind of you're trying to lead content. Um, I think what a lot of us also deal with in a day-to-day -day is just like how to run an effective meeting, like how to have like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, five of your teammates and how to kind of facilitate that and make sure you're getting your stuff done. So I wonder if that's something that you could speak to as well, um, totally. as well how, to, how to keep people engaged and giving input and making sure that everybody is heard. Yeah, totally. Um, do you have a use case in mind? Is it just like team meetings, you know, about five people kind of daily sort of? check-ins or the more yeah, specific um, if I can give a use case what I'm thinking of is we just kicked off a project and we have a weekly meeting for 30 minutes to check in on how or how are each each of our pieces are going and like anything that's blocking us uh, just kind of like an update meeting and how do I have people um, show up to that with their updates ready um, people tend mm -hmm, to want to dive mm -hmm. into discussion um, but we don't mm -hmm, usually have mm -hmm. time for that. And so kind of trying to balance having enough time for discussion, but also not really having the time for discussion because uh, it could go on totally. for hours. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. And this is often, what, what often happens is that we start with the why, which I think is really important. And we front load that content up front. And then we get to the like specifics at the end of a session. <laughs> so I'm flipping forward to that. Um, my first question would be, um, what tool are you using? Do you mind if I coached you a little bit, Kale? What, what tool are you using? 
Um, for the meetings, we're using Hangouts. Um, for okay. our cool. tasks, we use Asana. And then we also okay, have you Slack. Got Asana. And you have Slack. Okay, cool. Um, do you have a clear pop for those meetings? Um, main, I've never heard the term pop before today. So I could probably um, do it. Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Obviously, I'm too reliant on that. Is it clear why you're meeting, what you're trying to achieve? And like, do you have like a recurring agenda that you go through? Um, I think so, but maybe it's, I think, I think it is clear. I think it's just a struggle between um, just like, wanting that time for discussion uh, yeah. and not really having it. Yeah, cool. Um, thanks for answering my questions. So I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna try to answer your question by, by go, moving through this section. Um, so these are my three preferred tools. I don't know if you've heard of this thing called Zoom. Um, Zoom has like endless features. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm happy to stay on and chat about, it, about them too. There's Zoom meetings, there's Zoom webinars, they serve different purposes. Um, getting comfortable with things like, did you know you can turn off the waiting room once people join so that you don't have to keep on watching and admitting people. Did you know that you can set up all your polls ahead of time? Did you know that you can do automatic breakouts as well as manual? And did you know that, whatever, there's tons of examples. So leaning into Zoom, I think, or whatever tool you're using. Google Meet's great for just like quick meetings. That's what we use at CSI. Um, Mural is amazing. We're not gonna have time to get into it. Um, it's my preferred um, tool for brainstorming. So that would be what I would say, Kale, is if you're shifting into discussion or brainstorming, that's a different purpose. That's a different way that our brains work. Um, we can't just rely on, like if you're shifting, then shift the format, shift the tool that you're using, I would say. That could mean just like generating an ideas in a Google Doc. That could mean using Mural or Miro, Miro is another one. Um, that could mean just like setting up a Google Jam board and getting people to throw post-its at it. Um, what I've noticed a lot, even with our team at CSI, is that we'll be like, okay, like let's generate some ideas here. Um, but we still just keep talking and following the same format that we're using. Instead, it's like, whoa, that's not how our brains work. Okay, what's the question at hand? What's the discussion question, the brainstorm question, whatever. Is everybody clear on that? Cool. How about we take two minutes to be silent together and think of some ideas. We can jot it down on a piece of paper. We can put it in our Google Doc, whatever. And then let's visually represent it. And if we wanna, and if we wanna build on each other's ideas, what's our process for that? So it's going deeper, but I think that what's happening is that we're just kind of relying on what we would, what we might do in person. Though I would argue that probably wouldn't work very well in person either. Um, so there's that. Um, Slack is great. So I use, we use Slack a lot for, um, for learning. Um, so what I'll do often is I'll get people to, um, to open up Slack as, like as they join. So I'll be like, okay, make sure you have Slack open. For example, you can do this with any sort of chat platform, whatever. And I'll pose a question and then I'll ask people, okay, now see how I asked you about what your key takeaway is for today. Now, everybody, can you take two minutes and then reply in the Slack thread? And then we have that and that stays permanently for us to learn together. So you could also play with that with your meetings or your on like your learning environments, I would say it's really key. PGC uses it extensively for our social entrepreneurship 101. So that's that. And then these are some fun tips. Um, so sorry to just throw a bunch of text at you, but I'll talk this out. Um, again, thinking of, of Kale's use case and just, just generally, like I think for all of our online environments. So at the bottom, little things that make a difference, narrating as you go. So did you notice that I was like, okay, I've got my two monitors here. I'm just gonna click through whatever, whatever. Described video um, is more accessible for some participants, especially those that, um, well, either they're not looking at their screen or they can't, or they're using screen readers or whatever. So narrate as much as you can. Um, but as well, it just like, rather than these awkward pauses, it just helps people kind of keep with you, I think. Use music. I always, I love playing music to start and end if I can. If you have breaks, play the music during breaks. Use your polls. You've already heard me do this, like give me a sign of life, give physical cue, cues. Another tip that I have is um, asking, I think they're called like negative questions. So who, who's experienced when, when a facilitator's like, is that clear? And you're like, no, it's not, but I don't really want. <laughs> um, is anybody not clear on the question or is anybody not clear on the activity that's just about to happen, for example? Um, that's helpful. Is anybody not seeing my screen? Um, again, this is like, you know, applicable in person, but, but online, I think it's especially useful. 
chat storm, we experienced that. So like um, use of humor, yes, Grant. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that. Um, you know, typing it into the chat and then press, pressing send all at once. Cause I think that people get overwhelmed when they, on the one hand, they see a bunch of people answering something they feel like they don't have to. But I think they also get overwhelmed because people need a second to think about stuff. If you pose a question to them, not everybody just has it on the tip of their tongue and that's okay. Um, so I like chat storm for that. Um, use of humor. So again, going back to the kind of energy and the vibe that you bring. Um, uh, when I, okay, so um, when I say, oh, Tara, I'm really conscious of time as I am right now. Um, so if, sorry to interrupt, but if you don't mind, we're gonna move ahead versus Oh, Tara, I'm sorry, but um, I'm really conscious of time. I really appreciate what you're saying right now, but I think we're gonna, I'm gonna have to move this along. Um, I try to smile, especially when I'm doing stuff like that. And maybe you don't agree, but I think we sound different. We bring a bit of a different energy. Um, I make bad jokes all the time and try to laugh and laugh at myself. And I find that that helps too. Um, Okay, I'm feeling a little bit stressed about time. Um, synchronous versus asynchronous. We talked about this a little bit. Um, just being very cognizant of like when and how you come together and how you're using that time. And actually going back to Kelsey's case, but then others. Um, do you need to be doing that in the meeting or could you be doing something in Slack? For example, team updates. Could you prompt people in Slack? Could you prompt people over email? Could you do something ahead of time and people read updates so that when you come together you're using that time really effectively? You know, do you need to be all in person with videos on, unmuted at the same time after probably five hours of other Zoom meetings doing the thing that you're doing or could it be done in, different, in a different way? Um, passive versus active. So I'm breaking my rule right now, but normally I don't like to, we've had some interaction, but normally I don't like to, like when I hire facilitators and educators, like. I'm like no more than 15 minutes of presenting. So that's passive, right? So you're just listening, I'm downloading information to you um, versus active and we're trying for a bit of engagement. I find online, like some people have energy for it, some people don't. So building in little ways to engage is great. And the deeper you can go, the better. Leaning on your tools, we've already talked about that. And yeah, I wanna ask, and let's pause for a second again um, for your questions, reflections or questions so far. And Tara, if there's anything in the chat that you wanted to note, please go ahead. Just a note that this really okay. could be a multi-part series. And I think that's a recognition <laughs> of the value of this, uh, of this uh, content and your work. So thank you, Shay. <laughs> Thanks, Tara. That makes me feel better because I'm because my plan has gone out the window. Um, I would still like to do a breakout group, or sorry, a breakout. Um, so we've got 29 participants. What if we did groups of nine? Yeah, go ahead. The breakout room function, when you go to assign it, if you put, if you play with how many rooms, it'll actually tell you how many participants are in the room. So you don't have to worry about doing the math in your head. So with this many participants here, 29, uh, four to five per room, if we have six breakout rooms. So would you like smaller That's or? <clears throat> Smaller, smaller. So I think we're only gonna send people out for, we're ending at 120, right? So let's send people out for five minutes. Um, and I think, and this is for the group too, um, I love pair and share in person. Um, and uh, online, it can be intimidating because you cannot know somebody and then all of a sudden be in this you know, online room with them. I, I default to groups of three. So let's do that, groups of three for, five minutes um, and I want to see if folks have their own ideas so tips and tools that you have tried or have noticed um, and if you're coming up with nothing that's okay um, please note down your questions and we had a plan for adding to a google doc but I think uh, let's leave that let's just um, ask people to note down some key thoughts that come up and then we'll hear from a few folks as they come back so we'll be back from breakout groups in four minutes. Great. All right, folks, enjoy your five minutes.
and we've got a group, maybe some people just haven't joined yet and that's okay. Or they've moved on to other things and they don't know that we're asking them to join rooms. That's also all right. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna set my timer for four minutes. So they'll be back at 1.15, And then... Um, I can also use the broadcast to, uh, to let them, to give them a warning. Yeah, let's do that. How about, because um, I don't think I can see, let me see if I can see. This is an interesting use case because we've got, we've got like two hosts. Yeah, no, I don't have control over the breakout rooms now. So if you don't mind broadcasting in, just like give them a one minute warning. And it can even be like, okay, we're gonna close the rooms now. So you've got one minute before you'll be prompted to join or it'll, they'll be closed. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Uh, hi, I was on a desktop and uh, that doesn't work in breakout rooms. So I was oh, in eight, I don't know if it's Sorry. Okay. I, I can know that. I can move you back into room eight. Would you like that? That would be great. Great. Sending you there now. All right. Thanks. I think you do have to accept it with the way we're set up. Oh yeah. I see it now. I just I have to join something else right after this. So I was just gonna be on my desktop, but yeah, not gonna work for this thing. Are we for time? One twelve. It's funny, as much as you use these things, like the breakout, it didn't give me an option to set up how long they were going for, which I know is a thing you can mm -hmm. pre preload mm -hmm. and to just send them, but that's okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, I know that's a, yeah, actually, if you want to give them that, we're closing down now, assuming it's on the 60 seconds. Okay, so I just sent that broadcast. Mm -hmm. Great, that's awesome. Thank you. I like the way okay. you said this is what it is. It's not automatic with the way it was set, the way it defaults. So I'll just have mm. to click close all rooms manually and then they'll be pulled back. Yeah. And, ha and have you done that? No. Okay, let's do it. Hi folks, welcome back. Hello. So yeah, breakout rooms. Uh, if you haven't done it before, they're a great tool. Practice it, especially if you're doing it with like a large group or it's high stakes or whatever. Practice it with your team, for example, to start um, and play around. So you can see how Tara broadcasts to you. So you can send messages to all of the groups. You can also, um, people can leave the rooms. You can assign them to different rooms. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, you know, the first time that I did it in with a kind of big group in a high stakes environment, I created three groups rather than groups of three. 
and <laughs> that sucked. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, I would love to hear from a couple of people that haven't spoken yet, if you feel comfortable. Um, what were some key tips or tricks or some key questions that came up in your groups? We'll spend a few minutes on this. I'm counting in my head. Heck, Tara, I'll go. I'm not going to say that I'm representing the physicians of Mayre and uh, Anita who are in the group with me. But one thing that I raised, and it seemed to have a bit of an echo, which is uh, maybe we could talk at some point about teaming up, like uh, pairing or having you know a, a trio of facilitators so that you can be more reactive, more dynamic. Someone can be preparing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and doing things. I mean, a little bit like you're handling the chat, but it, but actually like, you know, both of you doing kind of facilitating. So that'd be something. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a great, that's a great point. Um, I would, I never do, unless I'm like really comfortable with the group and it's like a smaller group. I almost never facilitate online without somebody else. In person I would, but it's just like, it's so nice to have somebody else there with you. So Tara's playing like kind of backstop support, tech support right now. A more meaningful role, Tara, we should do this next time, is that you're actually co-facilitating. You know the agenda, you can like pitch back and forth. Um, yeah, great idea. Um, I, yep. so I mean, I had a good uh, question because I asked, should a leader be the facilitator? Because a leader often wants to get something specific, but a facilitator mm -hmm. can know how to manage the group. And he said that in, in his teams, they each take, um, they take turns in their meetings facilitating and there's totally different mm -hmm. styles. I thought that was really nice to mm -hmm. do. So yeah, another great point. And then going back to that, um, you know, your ongoing meeting question, Kale, like um, we do that on the community team at CSI. Also the programs team is that we have recurring facilitators. I think that works well when you have a shared recurring consistent agenda or pop that you're all familiar with and have bought into. So kind of people know how to go and then they can bring their own style to it. They don't have to like do a bunch of work to do it. So that's one point. Uh, on the other hand, I think the question is who, you know, what is the purpose of the meeting? If it's like designing something, coming up with a strategy, whatever, in my opinion, no, the key decision maker should not be facilitating that meeting. That often happens, um, but that's why you see like external facilitators coming in is because they can be a quote unquote neutral party to support the group together. Um, Otherwise, people respond differently when somebody with power in the room is dictating the or driving the agenda. Any other uh, questions or, or key points? Ari put up his hand to ask a question. Ari, are you able to unmute? So I was going to speak for our group. I was with Chris. I was with uh, them and with uh, Grant. We really didn't have a lot of time to talk about it, but we basically just kind of talked about the different platforms, Zoom and uh, gather count and so forth. So we we, have, we ran out of time. Cool. Sorry that you ran out of time. That's my fault. I'd say for breakout groups, you probably like that was the minimum amount of time. And for three people to talk, that's not enough time really. Um, so typically I would always send people out for seven minutes. And yeah, groups of three are my favorite in online environments. One last point I'll make before we do um, a quick checkout is uh, in this, in this slide, you see play with structure. There are so many different ways that you can structure your environments online. You're a little bit limited, but something that I play around with and I invite you to, especially if it's like, you're trying to create something together, you're trying to get somewhere together, or um, you're trying to learn something together is uh, thinking in terms of uh, solo to small group breakouts to large group. And the reason that I say that is Solo, when I ask you to reflect on a question and really invite you, okay, we're gonna take two minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute, we're all gonna mute. We're gonna take two minutes and reflect. It opens up um, a different way, way of thinking and responding to that question. You're given space and silence and time with yourself that we often don't get. So that's one kind of purpose. The next is that you're able to like, in a breakout group, kind of um, share your ideas, feel seen by other people and potentially kind of um, uh, notice the connections together. So you're kind of building on each other's ideas. And then when you come back together in a group as we've done right now, you feel like you're part of a collective of people. You might not agree with everything that's being said, 
but you feel like you're part of a whole. Um, you also notice um, bigger patterns and hopefully as you're listening to me speak right now, you're making other connections and thinking forward to other ways of, of doing your work. So again, different play with structure and, and that's kind of how I roll with online often. Okay, I wish I had more time. Damn it. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna share this, uh, the slides afterwards. I skipped a whole sec session with some pretty slides and you know some effective practices, but you'll see it afterwards. And again, I'm gonna stay online for another 10 minutes. Um, reflection and close, as I said, don't just leave people hanging. Uh, there's different ways that you can close. Um, we're going to do the one word check out in a second. Something that I also do oops, is um, what's one key takeaway or what's something that you learned from today? I'll either invite people to share it in the chat or I often use those Slack threads that I noted. So I've put a prompt and then I get people to, to share their responses and they can see each other's ideas. Um, you've probably hopefully maybe experienced the what, so what, now what square circle triangle is another format for that. So this is kind of from varying levels of quick and quick and dirty, a little bit more meaningful and then quite deep. I would never do what, so what, now what in less than like 15 minutes. So what is like, what's something that jumped out at you? Why does that matter? So what, why does that matter to you? Why is it resonating with you? And now what are you gonna do about it? So that's kind of a different way of asking questions in a format. But for today, and I'm sorry, we're at 121. My question is, um, what's one or two words to describe how you're feeling? This is a chat storm, so don't enter, don't press submit yet. So you can enter in the chat a couple words to describe how you're feeling. Enter it into the chat. I'm going to do it too. And press send. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So you can see how people are kind of feeling as they leave and give them a second to kind of close. Okay. Tara, I'm sorry that that was so packed. I'm sorry that was so packed, crew. No, but no. I'm going to stay on now if you have further questions. And, and uh, from me, thanks so much for joining. I hope that was useful.